Hey there, Father Michael here. Today, finally, oh my God, it is finally Cut and Color Monday. After almost a month of uh, sun bleached, dry, tired hair with a ton of gray roots lurking underneath, you know, like, like an evil, I don't even know what, evil fungus uh, <laughs> on, the, on the face of my head. Uh, but, but cut and color is a process, actually. And since I happen to live with someone who is um, a professional at these things, a former celebrity makeup artist, I haven't had to actually pay for a cut and color in years, like over six years. So I just make an appointment in-house, uh, as they say, and it's taken care of. But not always to plan. Today is not going to go the way I thought because old boy is working at his store all day today. So he didn't have time to complete the whole complicated high maintenance process before he had to leave for work. And to make it worse, usually I'm off on Monday, but tonight I am observing uh, a clinical colleague um, uh, as a favor. And so that means I won't get this whole process uh, under control until sometime tomorrow evening. The color part, as you can see, we got that taken care of. And the mask and all that conditioning, whatever that's about, that's all done too. But it's the cut part. The cut part, which is like a little overdue. That's going to have to wait until another day. Ugh. Yesterday, based on the gospel in Luke's gospel, uh, gospel reading from Luke, the disciple asks Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus teaches them the prayer that we know as the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. And so I talked about prayer yesterday in my sermon, what prayer is, what prayer is not. And I had some technical difficulties with Facebook Live. So it, that never got posted. So I'm going to redo that sermon because I think actually... I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm maybe I need to hear the message myself, which is usually the case. But the punchline of my whole reflection yesterday is pretty simple. You and I, or at least me for sure, tend to look at prayer as something kind of mechanical. You know, if we say the right things to God, uh, if we notify God in the appropriate manner of everything that's going on with us and in our life, all the struggles of this life, then we fall back on the words of Jesus, who says, you know, ask, seek, knock, and we'll get our prayers answered. Yay! That is perfect. It's great. Except, except when it doesn't work. When we don't get the thing or things that we begged God for. And then when that happens, now we're pissed off and we're resentful and we blame God and we doubt God's goodness and God's love for us. But what if there's another way of looking at that? The reality is God loves every one of us, without exception, as a daughter or son. And God loves us 
unconditionally. So that means we are all equal in God's sight. What does that mean? That means God loves Biden as much as God loves Trump. God loves Republicans as much as Democrats. White crystal fascists as much as liberals. Nazis as much as American soldiers. And I throw in that last bit because my father was a bit of uh, an historian and a collector of stuff. And one of the things he had in his collection of Nazi memorabilia, aside from weapons and uniforms and all that, was a belt buckle taken from a German soldier, killed at Verdun, I believe. And in German, the belt buckle said, if God is for us, who can stand against us? It blew my mind that everybody in the conflict uh, during World War II, on, both, every, on all sides, were mostly Christians, praying to the same Jesus, praying for the same thing, for victory. So even though, you know, as human beings, we have a lot of differences between us, we're all praying to the same one power and one presence at the heart of the universe, the same God. We're coming to that same divine spirit with all of our needs and our wants, many of which, let's be frank, are, you know, uh, the complete opposite of what other people are praying for with exactly the same amount of faith. So what does that mean? How, how does that work? Why does God answer some prayers and then seemingly ignore others? Why do I sometimes get exactly everything I want exactly in the way I wanted it the way I expected it, and then other times. Uh, those circumstances that I have begged God to change simply do not change. Why? I think the answer lies in our attitude toward prayer and toward God. When we pray, we're not asking God for connection to God. We're asking God for stuff. We're asking for things from God. It's We're not looking for God. And we expect magic Jesus to kind of swoop down ooh, and grant our wishes, kind of like the fairy godmother did for Cinderella which kind of tells me that we view prayer as a mechanical thing, like a vending machine in some ways, instead of a heart-to-heart -heart connection between the creature and the creator. In other words, this is all about relationship. Relationship is all that matters here, and regardless of the prayer, regardless of the person doing the praying, the answer is always the same. God. God is the answer to every single prayer of every human heart. Whether we are able to put those prayers into words or whether we are so overwhelmed that all we can do is weep and sigh. And since God is the answer then, that means that our circumstances can and do change sometimes. Because if there's one thing I have learned about God, God is super good about changing the human heart. I've experienced that innumerable times in my life. A big storm, a snowstorm, uh, brings out uh, a neighbor with a snowplow to clear my driveway 
and my sidewalk. A flat tire on a, you know, a county road in a rainstorm brings some dude in a truck with a hydraulic jack who not only changes my tire in like three minutes, but then he won't even take any cash as a thank you. A prayer for growth in my two parishes, the, the ones I pastor, result sometimes in people showing up. They hear about us. They find us in mysterious ways. They hear about us or they catch a video and they're like, hmm, what's that about? And they want something different in their church experience. They don't want easy answers. They don't want all that. They want a place where they're accepted for who they are with no questions and, and not where doctrine and dogma and all that matters, but where relationship means something. And then there are those times, you know, when a cut and color Monday, even though it doesn't go the way I had planned or hoped, still works out on a timetable, not my own. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, The peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, what Paul is saying is, bro, don't be anxious. Don't worry. Just present your requests to God from a place of gratitude. Because God doesn't need your news update. God already knows what's going on. But in sharing that awareness that we have about what's going on and what we think we need, sharing that awareness that we've come to on our own, we find that God's promise actually is true. Namely, that we will have peace in the measure that we're ready to accept it. Answers do not always come in the ways we want or in the ways we expect. That's a given. And I don't have a whole lot of answers as far as why, why not. But I do know that God is the answer. The answer is always always God. And so there are no unanswered prayers, really. Sometimes God shows me when I feel helpless and lost, God straight up shows me and inspires me to handle the struggles that I have encountered all by myself. Other times, God sends me people sometimes out of nowhere, who just step up and offer to help. But no matter what the situation, God always provides God's self. Because God is the answer. The only answer. Let's pray. Loving God, we come into your presence in this moment of connection, acknowledging that you are God and that we are not. We trust that you already know our heart's desire. Today, as we begin a new week, help us to be humble, patient, and a little more loving than we were yesterday. For all of those people that you have sent our way who have brought us hope, help when we needed it, we thank you. Help us today to be attentive to those crying out with prayers of their own. And show us how 
how we might be an answer to their prayer, whether it's spoken or unspoken. We ask all this in the name of our brother, Jesus the Christ, the one who continues to live and work with you in the Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Have a great day.